Have you ever wanted to make vehicles with perfect handling and velocity control? Or have you ever wondered about body positions and body velocities and how they work and how you could make your own custom versions that could fit your desires better? Well, all of this can be accomplished with PID control, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. And I've implemented PID in Roblox with my own custom module called RoPID. In this video, I'll explain it and I'll show you how it works, what you can do with it. And of course, the downloads and the GitHub repository will be in the description. So, like and subscribe if you enjoy. And make sure to join my Discord server. The link will be in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. So I'm here at the RoPID GitHub repository, which I will link in the description. And I want to do a quick explanation of PID. So PID is this little algorithm right here. And you can see it has a bunch of like weird Greek letters and a bunch of variables. But all you have to know is it has three components to the proportional, integral, and derivative part. Derivative is basically like the damping. That's what I like to think of it of. Proportional is just like the force, and integral just helps with the proportional. That's a very basic understanding, and I will link a YouTube series that goes much more in-depth than my quick explanation. But that's the basic idea. And it's a closed feedback loop, meaning the result of this calculation is fed back into the algorithm to compute another result. So it's aware of its surroundings. So a normal open feedback loop, like in real life, if a motor is set to turn at a specific speed, it'll just turn that speed. If something stops it, it won't really understand. But with PID, it will, and it will try to adjust accordingly. But this algorithm does not work on its own. There are three constants that you must adjust, the KP, the KI, and the KD. And these are called the gains. And tuning the gains is probably the hardest part of PID, in my opinion. But luckily, the module I've created helps with that. And also, one thing you want to note is that the some terminology, the set point is the value you want to achieve. So it's your goal, your desired position, your desired velocity, your desired temperature, or whatever. And the process value is the number quantity read from the environment. So this little line going down here it's kind of weird to see since i'm using github dark but it's fine and so row pid does all of this and it has a bunch of utility that helps as well and you may be wondering oh i've heard of this before arrow game framework has something very similar in this pid module but mine has a bunch of utility and it also implements interval windup clamping which is basically when the integral just doesn't is being stopped it will start ramping up all of the air and once that pressure is released it'll like fling out and it'll cause drastic changes again it's explained more in the youtube series but it's a really nice feature that prevents your systems from going crazy so here i will show you a few examples so I want to make a quick example. Let's say you want a ball to roll at a certain velocity. And I know this can be achieved with a body velocity, but PID gives you a little bit more control over what's happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a ball or a sphere, and I'm going to add a vector force to it just to get it something to move. And really, I want the attachment to be at the very center of the part. So I'm going to make the orientation 0, 0, 0, make the position also 0, and that should be good. And also, I want to change the vector force from relative to attachment 0 to relative to the world. Then I want to add the row PID module, so I'm going to take it from the toolbox. link will be in the description for this. You can also sync this in using Rojo. And I'm going to take the row PID, shove it into replicated storage. Then in my part, I can create a script. And I want to get, let me zoom in. I want to get row PID. So I'm going to say row PID equals require game get service replicated storage. 
dot row PID. There we go. And then we can also get the part, which will be equal to script dot parent. And then I want to get the vector force. I'm just going to say VF equals part dot vector force. And then now we can actually create our PID controller. So we can say local controller equals row PID dot new. And this function constructor takes five parameters. The first three are the gains, so the KP, KI, KD, in that order. And the la and there's two extra that are optional, the min and the max. Because sometimes in game development, you need to restrict the amount of force that a part can exert. So for the gains, I'm just going to put a bunch of test gains. We'll tune it later. So I'm just going to say, so we'll do like 3, 0 0.5, and like 1. And then we really don't need a min and max. Max is going to be going slow enough. And while we're here, we can actually define our goal velocity. Whoops. Velocity. And I'll set that to 2 studs per second. So I'm just going to say studs per... Actually, it won't really be 2 studs per second. Let's just leave that at 2 for now. And then down here, we want to say game, get service run service dot stepped connect function et dt which is elapsed time and delta time and the reason we're making this event to run every single frame is because the controller is meant to be as lightweight as possible so it only updates when you update it. And the best way to update your controller is every single frame. So it has the most accurate information and can provide the most accurate results. I'm pretty sure you can test this with a loop. It would be a lot slower and a lot more clunky. But I mean the options there. But for now, we're going to stick with this event structure. So the way we get our output from our controller is just by saying local output equals controller calculate. And then for the calculation, we have to put in a three variables. The first one is the set point, so our goal. I'm just going to say goal velocity. The next is our process value, which I'm going to say as the part dot assembly linear velocity. Actually, let me check what direction it is. So it's facing X, so we have to get the linear velocity dot x and then for our delta time make sure to put in dt so that's the three parameters you have the set point the process value and then delta time do not forget delta time whenever i make my controllers i always forget to put delta time but it will err if you don't have that because it's essential to getting the output correct and then after that we just have to apply our force so we can say vf dot force equals vector three dot new and we'll send in the output, 0 and 0. So, oh, I spelled it wrong. Whoops. So what this should do is it'll update our velocity given the current velocity and our goal velocity. And we'll put that back into the force, and then it'll like reciprocate. It'll go back and forth. So now we can test it out, see if anything is messed up. And you can see it starts rolling a little bit. Now, one thing I've noticed when dealing with this sort of example is most of the time it's better just to use a P controller. So the way you would only isolate one single gain is by setting the other gains to zero. So this is called a P controller because P is set to three, I is zero, and D is zero. So it's just a basic P controller, which is the simplest type of controller. But for an application like this, it should work. So let's run this again. Let me just get rid of this. And you can see it goes up to speed. And it rolls at approximately 2. It's getting up there right now. It, I guess it's taking a little time to get up. But you were at like 1.6. So if I were to toggle the gains a little bit, you can see that happen. And speaking of that, we can actually test that out with the tuner. So I'm going to say local tuner equals require row PID dot util dot tuner.
And this tuner is meant to tune our gains of our PID controller. And the way you do that is by saying local tuner equals tuner.new. What's the name of our tuner? We're going to say the name is ball tuner. And then the controller we want to pass in as our controller. And then there's an optional third argument, which is the parent. But it defaults to the workspace, so I'm going to leave it as the workspace. And what this tuner.new does is it creates a new folder inside of the workspace with attributes assigned to each of the gains of our controller. So if I were to run this, let me just get rid of that again. You can see there's a folder in my workspace named the ball tuner. And on the right side, you can see the attributes of our KD, KI, and KP, and our max and our min. So if I set the KP to something like 10, it should start going a little faster. And you can see it's sort of getting there. And like we can also set it to something like 100. And now it's actually going. But if we were to say set the KD to like 5, it would slow it down a lot, which that is not ideal. Actually, right now it's going a good speed. That's because it like had some time to ramp up. But sometimes it just wouldn't do that. And like if we set the KI to 1,000, you can see stuff starts happening really weirdly doesn't really work that well but i found that setting only the kp works the best in this situation now one limitation of this tuner is that it only the changes only persist during a runtime so once you close out of it it's gone and so you just have to remember all of those gains that you tuned in and just set them up in your constructor now i could create a plugin to do this for me but this module is already big enough. I just want to get it out there. Maybe in the future, I could do that if there is enough demand. But that is a most basic example. And code for this, similar to what I've done here, will be in the repository under the examples. So let me just bring it up right now. You can see there's an examples folder. And you have a ton of these. We just did the velocity. And it has some basic stuff here. So along with the one I just showed you, I also created two others. This is the one that we did up here. I also made a GUI that follows your mouse. Let me zoom in. I know the resolution kind of sucks, but you can see the GUI just kind of follows your mouse. And this gives you some dynamic animations if you don't want to use just tweens. And then lastly, I created the equivalent of a body position. And... It kind of looks like it's welded to the part, this, like the big outside ball, but it's just following it very well. I don't know how I got the gains that good. I'm kind of crap at tuning my PID gains, but, you know, it works pretty well. And the cool thing about doing something like this is the normal body position in Roblox does not have an eye component. But using my system, you can add that if you so desire. And one thing I've really notice about using something like this is it's very good for stuff like the submarine I made in my previous video. And I'll link that right now. And the submarine uses PID for the pitch, the yaw, and the roll, as well as the velocity in like my second version. And that allows you to con control the handling almost perfectly depending on how you tune it. It's, it gives you a lot more control than a body gyro or a like angular velocity or something like that. And in this repository, you can also see the installation, the quick start guide, and all of the API if you guys want to see it. Also, one thing to note I forgot to mention is there is a few helper modules along with the tuner, specifically Vector2 and Vector3, and these just create controllers with three controllers inside of them. So Normally, you're not just going to deal with normal numbers, so this will create a three controllers, but instead of only doing like one, like making different gains, it keeps the gains the same, and it also works with the tuner. And you can see an example of that in the ball example, which is a last example. And all these scripts are very short, which shows you how simple it is to work with this. And so overall, this was a great project to work on. I initially tried it just to get better at PID because at my school, in my robotics club, that's what we were starting to work on and I needed to figure it out. And it also gave me an opportunity to work with continuous integration using GitHub Actions. You can see my little script here.
and also using Remodel, which is a tool like Rojo, and it allows you to automatically publish your model. So when I commit to my GitHub repository, it will automatically publish the model to Roblox and release a release in the repository itself, which is absolutely wonderful. It was really fun to use, and I might make tutorials on all of these tools in the future. But other than that, I hope you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment any questions or suggestions down below. Keep in mind, I will have all of the necessary links down in the description. And I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.